I'm recording now. So we talked about basic concepts in SAP, we looked at what a client was, and uh, we we'll also look at that as we move on. We said, like when you were logging in, you, you saw the icon for a client, right? Where you typed 800. So that's really um, what a client is. And when you log into your client, what you have is access to your company code. So we just looked at those concepts. We talked about the real um, the real tier, tier architecture, was what we call Arotri in SAP. And we looked at those um, architectures. Um, basically, uh, we talked about, we said that the real tier, just like you have Excel and access as components um, on your PC, that is how, what is what the Arutri actually stands for. It's just um, layers, different layers in, in SAP. We, will, we looked at that in detail. We talked about uh, what ECC meant. We said ECC is called Enterprise Resource Planning Model, and ECC is in various different versions. We looked at the industry solution that SAP actually pro, um, provides um, solutions for. We, of course, we, as we established yesterday, a lot of industries. We looked at what an ERP was, um, looked at the functions of an ERP as regards to other normal accounting softwares. We looked at the functional areas because um, by the time you get your certification through this course from SAP, you're going to actually be a functional consultant. So we need we looked at the functional areas in SAP as regards um, that we looked at the areas, we looked at the advantages of ERP, we looked at the SAP modules, and then um, we talked about that we'll be concentrating mostly on FI, and then we'll introduce CEO as time goes. Remember, CEO is his own, is a has his own standard module that you have to learn as a full course. But when you're learning FI, you would actually need CEO to complete your customization. We looked at the FI module and the various areas that we will actually um, go through as we go through this course. We talked about careers in SAP for those who want to take it to the next level. There are a lot of opportunities and uh, careers out there you can find yourself. Once again, we looked about the three tier architecture, which is that every SAP system has um, three major areas. Um, the application, the database, the database, the application, and the user interface. And we try to look at those areas, those layers and details. Like I said, for those that are logged in, you're logged in through the presentation layer. The application layer does most of the processing. Of course, that's where you do also most of your customizations. And the database layer is for storage. We talked so much about those various layers. Look at the concept of what a client is and all that and all that. So look at project life cycle, um, how the phases, how the cycle of implementation, um, if you want to deploy SAP, the various stages you have to go through, from evaluation to pre-evaluation to blueprint, to realization, testing, and the rest. We, of course, this course looked at the details, what and each of those phases are. If you check your mails, you should have, um, I don't know if I've sent a copy of this, but I'll surely send. I think what I've sent is the videos. Okay, I think you have that already, but I'll send you this copy because like he, like he pointed out, the video did not start from the beginning. We looked at uh, logging into the SAP system. Some of us are already familiar with this by now because we are now logging in like i said that is the client and the client represents the particular area in the three tier that you are using this is mostly um the developmental stage that's why all we can do here is practice we're not going live with this with the client 800 we have then we have the first logon because this takes you to the home page or the easy access where you can i believe all of us were at this um, stage right now so from here, we'll kickstart our class for the day. Um, we just looked at some of the various menu bars, some of the bars we have 
And uh, what those bars actually stands for, we explained them in details yesterday. And uh, navigational areas, we looked at briefly about ABBA, so that uh, when you hear the word, it's not, it doesn't, it's not strange to you. And we said the, the programming language used in SAP for developing business applications and development. We also say that ABAP means advanced business, advanced business. Uh, somebody has blocked out. So SAP is advanced business application programming. And uh, we looked at um, really what is used for an SAP. It's majorly used for developing applications for reports, interfaces, forms, data conversions, you know, and the rest. And uh, we looked at some of the various areas and we called it a day. So today we are actually going to start in earnest and look at, go into the system and uh, actually navigate our way through. And uh, I'm going to share the next screen now. And uh, let me see what the course outline is. Today we are going to look at the organizational structures in SAP. I will give you brief notes about those structures and, um, and actually take it from there. Just give me a second. Hello, Kalechi. Hello? 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 Mr. P. Mr. P. Yeah, I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Mr. P. He said we should hold on. He yeah, will come on. back. Uh? Okay, okay. We should hold on. Okay. Okay. I, th I thought he was still there. I, I thought he was talking. Okay, um, is everyone there? Yeah, we are here. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to start. I'm going to explain some very key terms that are in our organizational unit. I would um, start by sharing my screen. Hello, Hello, I can hear you. Hello, Kelly. Hello, Kelly. Okay, please, can you send me a WhatsApp message, please? Yeah, please. Little audible while you are talking. Okay, okay, okay no problem. No problem. Only, my speaker is finished. You're the one complaining of my sound. Please adjust your own speaker from your laptop. Okay. No, I'm not using the laptop. Uh, that's the reason I use have used your laptop. Man. Okay, no problem. Okay, so please, we are going to look at some very no, basic, no. very basic um, organizational terms. You need to understand these terms before we actually continue. Now, before your screen is 
the uh, SAP software. And before we proceed, we need to look at these basic terms. Number one of those terms is the client. Like I've told you, um, the client is the highest level in the SAP ERP system hierarchy. Um, specifications and data that is valid for all of national units in the SAP ERP application are entered in the client level. So what it means is that at the highest hierarchy of the software called SAP is your client. And whatever that is obtainable in the client is obtainable for all company codes. For example, in my client, I have this bar, I have these um, options, office, cross application, and all that. Wherever any, whatever, uh, wherever anybody is in the world and you have access to this particular software, you will still have access to these same options. So what that's the, that's the concept of a client. Um, for example, there are some things you create at the client level that is a, that goes across all company codes. Why there are things you create at company code level that is just meant for your usage as an organization. So that is actually the concept of a client. And um, of course, example of the the items created at client level are things like your field status variant, your segments, your business area, your controlling area, and the rest of them. We'll come. We'll, we'll start. We'll learn about those terms as we move on. The next we'll talk about briefly is your company code. What is a company code? Now, the company code is the most important organizational unit of financial accounting. It represents an independent balancing or legal accounting entity. Financial statements required by law are created at the company code level. So what this is trying to say is that the company code is, is most likely what represents your company. And just as we have in our real life in accounting, when we, when we um, actually do our accounting jobs, for every uh, financial year or every month, or if you're using a software, you can generate reports, your financial reports um, automatically. But in SAP, you, you can mostly do that at your company code level, not at your client level. So it is that company code that you generate uh, financial statements that are required by law. And of course, the company code stands as an accounting entity. Of course, if we, for my professionals, of course, entity concept is one of the very key concepts in accounting as a, as a career. We talks about that every company is meant to exist for a very long time. Okay, um, the next important organizational unit we are going to look at. And of course, let me just explain that some of the items or elements created at company code level are things like your donning procedures, um, um, chart of accounts at company code segments, document number ranges, and the rest. So those are some of the um, segments, some of the uh, elements you can create at this level. Now, the next we will discuss briefly is business area, business area. Now, what is a business area? Uh, Emma? I can hear you. Please, please, what can you, when you hear the word business area, what comes to your mind? Business area should be your, I, I can see it as the, each of the departments. Business unit, the products. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, you have an idea, but well, not not far. Now, business area represents separate areas of operation, separate area of operation within an organization, and it can be used across company codes. Like I said, 
business area is created at a client level. And um, they are like, for example, if you have a, a, a group called Shell, and in Shell, Shell does offshore drilling, onshore drilling, and spill, spillage control. These are business areas that are on that shell. So that is actually what that is. And you must note that business area is a balancing entity that can create its own financial statement, just like company code. So business area is also a balancing entity that can create its own financial statement. Um, the next concept we'll look at, because I need to um, explain these terms, because when we go into configurations, you're actually going to be seeing these terms live. So you have an idea of, of what these terms actually stands for. You have an idea of what these terms actually stands for. Now, the next is profit center. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. The next is the next is profit center. Now profit center evaluates the success of independent areas. Udo, please can you meet yourself, please? Profit center um, actually evaluates the success of individual independent areas within a company. The aim of profit center is to, pride, is to provide an internal analysis of profits. So um, the term profit center is actually um, an area and organization that actually generates income and that incurs cost. So an example of a profit center can be um, a company that, that deals, an oil servicing company can have a product or can have a filling station that incurs expenses and also incurs in, and generates income. But profit center is actually used for internal analysis. It's not used for external reporting. It's just used to analyze the income generated and the expenses according to that center. So these are terminologies that you will find frequently as you venture um, through SAP. The next is segments. Mr. Prince. Hello, I can hear you. What do you when you hear the word segments, what, what does it tell you? Hello, sir. When you hear the word segment, what do you understand by segment? Yeah, segments, it has to do with um, areas, like parts, something okay. of that nature. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, Divisions, maybe. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you very much for that. Um, just to look at it in a more, in a more um, probably have a definition. A segment is actually like a, a business area. But the basic thing about segment is that, um, like profit center, a segment is actually used for internal reporting. Why a business area is used for external reporting. Um, a segment can be, if you have, just as we have explained, Shell, Shell can have another segment that actually handles um uh, onshore drilling so more or less like a business area but the difference between a segment and a business area is that segments are profit and profit centers are used for internal reporting purposes the the reports from these areas are not used for external purpose so you have to have that in mind why the reports for company code and business areas are used for external purposes now the next concept we are going to look at is company. What is a company? Because as we have said, a company code in SAP, in the real life, just looks like what a company is. But in SAP, we have company code and we have company. And when you're writing your certification exams, 
you will see these concepts as, I mean, they just come out, but you need to understand them so that you can understand SAP. Now, a company, companies are used as a basis for consolidation function for financial accounting in SAP system. So when the hierarchy is that you have, you have a client, under your client, you have a company code, and under your company code, you have a company. The basic use of a company is for consolidation. So, so for example, under a company code, you can have several companies. The essence of this is that when you, if you have more than one company in the company code, you can use that future to do consolidation when you are want to actually do your, your year end um, reports. So that is the very, very important uh, function of a company, which is used basically for um, consolidation purposes in the SAP system. And a company can contain one or more company codes. So that is what I was trying to explain. A company can have more one or more company codes. Okay, now the next we will look at briefly is functional areas. What else we we'll look at is functional areas. Of course, functional area is basically used by cost of sales accounting. It's a concept in uh, SAP, which we would actually look at when we um, start an um, implementation, when we start customization. Okay, um, what it does is that um, it sorts operating costs according to functions. For example, in a company, you have um, different um, direct costs. So what functional area does is to split this cost into various functions. Example, you can have admin cost, um, selling and distribution cost, finance cost, um, and every other cost. So what functional area does is in, if you're in SAP, if you're using the cost of sales approach, you will actually need functional areas to break your cost down into various functions. And uh, we will look at other concepts like uh, controlling, what control is, but when we come to that area, we will actually explain more. We'll talk to you more about controlling. Okay, but let's just look at it. Uh, controlling, of course, is the management accounting part of, uh, of SAP. And the most important element of the controlling module is called the controlling area. So another concept you will look at is the controlling area. Now, a controlling area identifies a self-contained organizational structure for which cost and revenue can be managed and allocated. Now, of course, like I've said, um, we are going to introduce management accounting and controlling area is actually a cost area and it has its own structure. So at the end of the day, um, if you want to look at how costs have been managed so far, in your organization, depending on how you customize your controlling areas, um, you can actually do that because as a self-contained um, structure, cost and revenue, you can manage cost and revenue that you actually tie to a, a particular cost center. Of course, when we talk of profit center, you will know that there is cost center and cost center is where cost is actually um, generated. Okay, so these are basic concepts that um, you will need to understand. So um, write them down, read more. So your first assignment today is that you need to do a, um, you need to do research or you need to do a work for me on these concepts. And you will send them to me via my email. So that's your first assignment. Give me, um, define this concept, well, just a few lines. Define this concept, let me know what you think about them. It's not just to, just tell me what you think these concepts are. 
and send them to you via email so that you can go back and do research and fully understand this very, very important concept. So having actually looked at this concept, let's now go into the SAP system and see how these concepts play a role in our system. Now, the first thing you will do notice is that in the SAP Easy Access, we have two major areas in SAP, rather. One is the Easy Access where you perform end user activities. For example, if I go to accounting and go to financial accounting, if I go to accounting and go to financial accounting, these are all end user activities. Posting, documents, accounts, uh, master records, corrections, uh, periodic uh, processing, and the rest. If I open, for example, posting, you're going to see things like um, GL posting, incoming payments, outgoing donor, cash donor, and the rest of them. So this is where end users perform the activities. For example, if I go to accounts receivable, I will see, if I go to document entry, I will see things like invoicing, credit memo, incoming payments, and the rest. So these are, the easy access is used for, end, basically for end users activity. Now, the other area is actually called the customization area. The other area is actually called the customization area. Just a minute. Um, Okay, now in the customization areas, in the customization, first I told you there are two um, areas, the easy access, which is used for end user activity, and the customization area, which is used for, to customize your settings. Normally before you start using SAP, you must do some customizations at the back end. And as a consultant or super user, you should actually understand these back ends, but most end users, um, they don't actually know, they don't go that far. They just concentrate on the end user activities. But uh, the advantage you have for this training is that we expose you to the back end and how to do the various customizations before you actually start using the front end. So how do I get to the back end? There are, um, there are two ways. The first way is to, let me start this again. Are you there? The first way, the first way is to go to, uh, let's give me a minute. The first way is to go to uh, your SAP Easy Access. Go to tools. You can just write the steps. Go to tools. Go to customizing. So you go to tools. Remember, you'll be get you'll get this video. So don't spend a lot of time on your notes. Go to tools. Go to customizing. Go to IMG. And you will see a transaction code. Remember. These are called transaction codes. These are called transaction codes. Uh, let me see if they are on. Just a second. I need to see my technical control. OK. Um, if you want to turn on these transaction codes, because if I if I put off these technical names, you won't see these codes. 
if I put up, because I have actually put it up, if I go to tools, customizing, IMG, I won't see my technical names because by default, those transactions, we call them transaction codes. Those transactions codes are off. If I want to bring them out, I'll go to extra, go to settings, then I'll see the option, display technical names. And SAP is also called technical names. Why we also call them transaction codes. When you tick on this icon and say, okay. When you go back, you're actually going to observe that the technical names are actually displayed. So that is in case your technical name is not being displayed, just follow the step and you'll get it. So the technical name is SPRO. To the technical name to get you to your customization area is SPRO. And SPRO means execute project. Uh, so I can double click on this. It will take me to this um, customizing area for executing project. Then I'll click on reference, SAP reference ING. So if I click there, it will take me to the back end, which is like the customization area of SAP. So this is where we will do some work. We will, of course, as consultants, you actually understand this back end. Then you move to the front end to do end user activities. Now, if you cannot, because these steps look hard or long, if you cannot go through this step, just go, go to the command window here and type SPRO. And type SPRO. Click on enter. It will still take you to the same page where you type SAP reference ING. So that is both ways you can actually um, navigate your way to the customization area. Now, the first thing we are going to do today is actually to create uh, to create our own company. So we'll start by creating the company, provide the address and other details. Then after that, we look at other um, concepts. Now, how do I create the company on SAP. To create the company, after you've actually found your way to the um, customization area, you go to enterprise. There is an option here called enterprise. So you go to enterprise. Go to enterprise, go to definition. Of course, what we are working on is financial accounting. So you go to financial accounting. And you'll see the option, define company. you see all those terms I explained, business area, functional area, consolidated business area, segment, profit center, and the rest. So today, we are going to start by defining our company. And we will take it up from there. Now, click on define company. This um, clock like sign is called IMG activity. Now, if you want to know, if you want to read more about this particular um, icon, use this IMG activity documentation. If you click on it, it will display and educate you more on that icon you are about to execute. Click on that um, code like icon there. Let's see. Uh, what's the name? Okay. Once you do that, it's going to display. Now you can see that it has defined what a company is. So a company is an organizational unit in accounting which represents a business organization according to requirements of commercial law in that country. So um, you have all the time to enter, know more about that icon and read. Like I said, when you're learning SAP, all we can do is to expose you. You have a lot of work to do on your own. So you can study and read more about each and every of these icons. Every icon has a documentation area. 
to make life a little bit easier. So I'll click on, I'll execute this option called define company. Depending on your the processing speed of your system, uh, you can actually, uh, of course, if your system is faster to take it to where you're supposed to be. Okay. Now there's also, I need to also um, bring you up to speed with these icons you have at the top because we are going to use them a lot. This is called your enter screen. Remember, when you type any of your transaction codes here and click on enter, you're actually hitting this button. You either use your keypad or you hit this button. This is called the save button. This is to go back. For example, if I want to leave this page, I can go back. This is to exit, to exit a particular window. This is to cancel a particular document or transaction you're entering. This is the, to go to the first page, previous page, next page, last page. Then this is called create new session. Now, if you can work in SAP, you can work with up to six sessions. Those sessions are actually pages, new pages. For example, if I'm working on this area and I want to do another thing that is not on this particular area, I can just click on new session. See now, if I click on new session to open a fresh page, then from here, I can now, just bear with me, I will send you uh, a document that has all the transaction codes, or you can actually browse that yourself. When you start getting used to the system, um, you can actually use transaction codes to navigate your way through. But that comes as you learn. So I just entered a transaction code for purchase invoice. And uh, it's actually taking its time. But I guess um, very soon it's actually going to open up. I'll just give you the time you need. Is everybody there? Yeah. Okay. okay, so this is exactly what a, like I've said, I'm just trying to explain to you that I can work with different windows at the same time. I can work with different windows at the same time. So if I want to, if I don't want to, if I'm working on this, I can just minimize it. And I will see, and I have two screens. So that is how you can actually have up to six sessions. That's what we call them, six sessions. So that is actually what this tab is used for. Um, you can create shortcuts. This is for customizing. If you want to work on your graphics, your color, set color to system um, and other areas. At this point, at the bottom where you call your status bar, you can also see the current transaction code. So if you go to your status bar, you click this drop down. If you select transaction for every window you are, it's going to actually give you the transaction code. And it has also told you you're in the development system. Of course, your client is 800, user is that user and the rest. So we have this. So at this point, remember how we got here? I can go back. We went through enterprise definition, financial accounting, and we went to define company. So, So I'll click on define company.
Okay, so at the Define company, of course, you see a lot of companies here. Uh, it just depends on um, the one you want. And I must say something here that um, SAP has um, basic settings. This is not all settings we need to change or create a new one. We can copy settings from existing, already existing um, default setting on SAP. Please, it's advisable that we either in some areas we need to copy the settings and uh, the essence of copying is so that it will carry all the programs that run on that particular area so that we don't have issues when you are um, actually the, um, um, working on your SAP. So when those time areas come, I'm going to show you how to copy from an existing information and to create your own. So for example, uh, I have this company, IDS US. Now, anytime you see IDS, IDES, um, it will actually give you, it will let you know that that is actually a direct um, um, information from SAP. To let you know that that's a direct information or is a SAP generated data. Anytime you see IDS on your system. And most of the times, for a knowledge sake, we are advised to copy those settings. We are advised to copy those settings um, on that platform to make our life a little bit more easier. Sorry, uh, just give me a second. Okay. So basically those ideas is uh, internal demo systems. So we can use is almost almost advisable. I want to create my own company using this demo. IDS US, you can use any country of your choice. I don't think Nigeria is here. But uh, you can check. Nigeria is not. Uh... So when you see IDS, IDS, know that it's actually from an SAP defined system. So I will highlight on IDS and click on copy as this icon here. But if I don't want to copy, all I need to do is to create, is to click on new entries. If I click on new entries, then it will open this information. But if I don't want a new entry, I can decide to copy from an existing one, which in most cases is advisable. So I'm going to click on copy as. Immediately I click on copy, it will bring out the old information from the old system. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a company or a company code. Now a company code can be alphanumeric. So in your own system, um, you can define yours. My company code, is called um, Shell Petroleum Development Company, SPDC one. The company name is called Shell Development, Shell Petroleum Development Company Limited. The streets, I can use these streets in US because this is also a US company. The name, the name of company too can be any other name. Maybe um, you call this SPDC. It can be the second name. Postal code, I'll leave this. The city, I love New York, so I'll leave it. The country is US. The language key is English, E-N means English. And the currency is actually USD. So I'm fine with all of this information and uh, I think I think I'm okay I'll click on enter really I click on enter is saved and I have SPDC one shell development company being created 
So you click on enter, it will drop it down at the table where you have a list of companies. Then you click on save. Now save will bring out a customizing request uh, table. Now take note that this request is actually, is just to let SAP know what new information you have been creating on the system. What new information you have been creating on the system. If I don't want this, I can create my own request. If I want to continue with this request, please. This is a request of an existing company here. Yeah, I don't want, so I'll click on create request. Um, let me see if I can, uh, let me see. Okay, I can just call it SPDC one. Then I'll save. Okay, so I have short description SPDC one. Please leave this code, leave this customizing request code. Just change the short description because this thing, those can be changed, but let's just follow. Um, let's leave those customizing areas. Just go to new. In the short description, enter SPDC or uh, let me see if I can change it to write it in full. So, development, so petroleum. development company. Then I'll save. Your petroleum, called petroleum. EU. Okay, EU. Okay, let me. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that. E before you. Eh? Yes. Petroleum. The e U M. E U M. E -M. Yeah. E U M. Okay. Yes. E U M. Not U E M. E U M. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Petroleum. Yeah. Petroleum. Then I'll click on save. Then I'll click this continue. So with this, um, we have standard hierarchy. I would actually show you how you can um, see these hierarchies as time goes on. Okay, so you're done with creating your company. You can go back, that's the first step. The next step is to check your company code and probably make some, uh, um, make sure your company code is correct. Remember our company code is SPDC one and uh, is to make sure that uh, the company code is correct and it's actually used for what we want to do. So the next step after defining your company is to check company code. So I'm going to go to that same customization area and the next option is check, delete, and then check company code. Credit control is um, actually how you control credit facilities in your company, we might not be going into that. So we'll go to edit. You see the option edit company code. Uh, and I'll click on double click on copy, delete, check company code. Okay, so at this point, you see you might nothing will be displayed. Just go to this copy organizational object. You want to see if we we'll copy from an existing company code. Take a lot of time. 
So the essence of this is to copy. Remember, when we're creating our company, we copied from um, a US company. So we want to see if we'll copy the various customizations that is actually tied to that um, company. So I think we're waiting for this to populate all the companies we have. And um, see how that goes. If it doesn't, we can actually edit the one we have and continue. It's taking some time. If it doesn't come up, we might um, just create our own form by ourselves. Uh, let's just see how this goes. Okay, so immediately you do that, we have this. So we are going to copy um, company code setting from an existing company, like I said, to save you errors that might occur during um, customizations and to make your work a little bit easier. It's advisable you copy settings from an IDES, and we have said we are going to use the IDES of US. So we are copying from, actually going to drop down the list of all the existing company codes. And when we do that, it's going to copy the settings that is actually tied to this company code. So we have, I think it's 3000 we used, IDES, US, INC. So you double click on that. Then you're going to copy from 3000 to SPDC1, right? Uh, SPDC, let me see. Okay. Uh, Copy from, okay. Uh, so let me check this, just a second. Hello, Kelly. Yes. Are you aware of our soft line? I just came back. Yeah, hey, welcome. Soft line, okay. Don't worry, it's all recorded. So once you get the video, you see where it passes. But I'm trying to actually, um, okay, let me check for my company code. I think it's been created. Okay, let me check. Let 
and then okay so just to take us back um remember what we defined here was actually our company i think it's spdc let me see uh -huh. but what is here is okay spdc uh okay spdc one okay Okay, after this, go to edit, like we said, go to edit company data. Um, let's check SPDC. Okay, it's not there. So I have to create new. Go to company code, SPDC, company name. Uh, so, Can enter so, this city, New York, country, US, currency, USD, language, yen. So at this point, we are actually going to save this to ask for our customization um, settings. Okay, now it just wants us to probably explain more about our company. We're not using most of these information. Well, let's just see search term SPDC, uh, country, US, region, New York. I don't know whether that will be. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, English, telephone, and a lot, but I'm done with this basic information. I'll click on OK. Um, let me check this. Let me just start this. Let's see. Error with external tax system, Vertex. Okay, I think I'm going to. Time zone, New York. Um, one, two, three. Let me close this. Okay. Then I'll just say, okay. That um, window is optional. I think I've provided most of the information I want. So I'm fine. Then I've created the company code. Our company code now is SPDC. Now remember, to take you through the step. After defining our company, you go to edit, go to edit company data before you actually go up to the next one. So the edit company data is actually to help you generate your company code. When you're done with editing, you now go to copy, delete, and check company code. At this point, you go to copy um, the original setting. We are going to copy from 3000, remember, 3000 is actually IDS US, and uh, we can copy to SPDC since we now have a company code. And we say continue. Now, to tell you, data already exists. Do you want the organization? Do you want the organization complete object? But what it's trying to tell us is that um, it's going to actually copy most of the objects that we have from. The other company and uh, at this point why not let it say we'll say yes now it asks us if we want to copy the gls well we are going to actually have our own gls so we are going to say no now i say the reference currency has local currency as usd and of course we want to also use USD, so we are fine. Then, of course, target currency, you can say USD, and you say OK. Now, to give you a dialogue information box, say, setting data was not copied. Well, it's OK, we are fine with the one. The other information that we said no was not copied, so not everything was copied, and we're fine. You say continue. Say there is inconsistency, of course. Uh, profit centers, we might not be using that. So, of course, um, we have a, a number range 
and all that. Um, this is actually trying to copy the number range intervals. Number ranges are like numbers and documents, like invoices, um, credit notes, and the rest of them. And we will create our own number range later, but we can also transport these number ranges. So I'll say OK. And the system is going to take its time to actually transport um, the number range from the existing US company to us. It is important you copy these settings because if you don't copy them, you're going to do a lot of work in making sure that your company is actually okay for use. You're going to do a lot of work to ensure your company is okay for use. And this is actually advisable so that you can make life easy for yourself. So we're just going to wait for it until it's over, then we can move to the next thing. So remember what we have done today. We have looked at some of the concepts. We have looked at creating a new company. We have looked at creating a company code. We have also, we are also copying um, a company code object from one, from an existing company code to another. I think we'll take it from there. Um, because of one of our colleagues that the system is not yet on board, we might not go too far today, but we'll go as far as possible. And like I said, this video is always very clear. If you follow this video step by step, you won't have problems in finding your way. So it's important that, like I promised, after every class, the videos is actually going to be shared to you so that in your own free time, you can actually log in and, uh, um, and learn on your own time. So of course, once this whole place is new, it means we are good to go. So we'll just give it that time. And, uh, So it's actually trying to copy all the basic settings that the system needs. It's allow it to do all that. And um, actually going to be fine. Normally takes time, so please at this point, do you have any questions? Not yet, just go on for now.
Okay, immediately this is done. We are actually going to um, look at other areas like the business area. I'm going to create our business areas, create our uh, functional areas, create our segments, and see how far we go. To actually, to actually um, finish up, because uh, this is a this is a major. Can I, yes. Can I, this, this person who we pass, eh, you have really passed. I know you will send the video. Maybe whether you can do it. Uh, I can. I can do, but uh, we have the to. Video. Don't worry. The video is there. You will see. The, you can always pause it and see the steps. So don't worry about that. You will see. Of course, when you see video, you will see where I do, what I do. But I can always, I'll do a sharp review. Okay, now this is actually done. Now, take note, these are customizing requests. You can always change it to suit what you have done. So I can change this, uh, I can say new request, change this to uh, um, copy, so this request is just based on activity. Copy. Uh, it's like he has, he has screamed trees. Don't move it. I don't know what others are observing that. Ice cream. What I'm seeing is this transport number reach and address. Uh, it will soon come up. I'm done with that. That is what I'm also seeing too. Okay, that's what you're seeing. Yeah. Okay, just give me a second. Yes, yes. Transport number ranges and addresses. Yeah. Can you see it now? Okay, it has uh, yeah, I see yeah. Okay. Customizing request. Yeah, immediately after that, it will ask you to save. Okay. So what I want to do is to change the customizing request to exactly what I've just done. The customizing request is supposed to carry a hierarchy or a structure of your activities. So that at any point you want to make corrections, you can go back. I'll show you at the end of the day where all these requests actually goes to. So I'm going to go to a new request. What I just did was to copy um, settings. It's not compulsory, but once in a while, you have to explain further. So that copy settings from um, IDS 3000 to SPDC. If I don't, I save. Now, if I want to see most of the requests, if I go to own request to see the request I've done so far, like I said, the essence of this, are you seeing what I've done so far? The first is to create shell. After creating shell and copying, the next is copy settings. So it's important to create it in that hierarchical manner so that uh, your system can flow like that. So at this point, I'll click on OK. I'm, I'm OK with the request. Let me close this. Then I'll say OK. If you go to own request to show you your request so far, and you're done, you click on OK. And then after this, I'll just do a brief recap of what I did. Now, SPDC already exists. Do you want to transport? Do you really want to transport number ranges? Uh, I think I will say no. Let me, let me, uh, I've already transported number ranges. So please, at this option, say no. Say no, because I also need to um, create my own number ranges. Say no. Yeah, they're going to tell you company code 3000 completed or copied to SPDC. I'm fine with that. Say no. Now, what it has shown me is the selected object, that's the 3000, which is uh, IDS for US. And you see the action carried out, company code copied to SPDC. So when you get to this point, that means you have succeeded in the first major task of working on SAP. The first thing is to create your company 
The next is to create your company code, and the other one is to copy um, company codes from an existing company, an IDS company, not just any other company. IDS company to your company code. At this point, I'll go back. Let me just do a brief recap. Uh, like I said, uh, close this page. I can use the close here. Now, the first thing we did when I went to this, I defined a company. After defining a company, where I entered the company name and address and all that. If I want to look for my company, if the list is too long, just go to position, type your company name, SPDC. I mean, my own there is one. So I'll say, okay, that's my company name. It's going to bring out Shell, the company I've created. So I did that. The next thing was to, was to edit my company name so that I can create a company code. So I went to edit. Next is edit company data. And if I my company is here, so I just need to find the code to position SPDC. Company code is a four digit um, code that you use to, that is tied to, like I said, you can have more than one company code tied to one company. So I'm going to say, okay, my SPDC is here. If I double click on it, this is my company code, SPDC. The other one was my company name, SPDC1. So I'm going to, after this, what we did then was to copy, delete, and check. Now we're supposed to check the company code. When you check, you have to actually copy from an existing company. Now, the essence of copying this is to make sure that you have a comprehensive data. If you're doing it on your own, there are some things you will miss. And when you start missing those stops, you're going to have a lot of errors when you're running your SAP. So it's always advisable that you use an already existing SAP company. All these companies called IDESs are actually demo companies from SAP. So for whichever country you want, you use those settings. Please follow this instruction so that you won't have um, um, a lot of issues on your way. So we select it, select also your company code here and say, okay. And at the end of the day, follow the video that has just been done. You will see the steps where you need to say yes and where you need to say no. So that is actually that. The next thing we are going to do is to define, define our business area. We have already talked to, talked to you about what business areas are. And uh, let's assume this, my company has two major business areas. Of course, business area represents separate areas of operation. So how do I create my business area? The same customizing area, definition, financial accounting, I'll go and define, click on define business area. When I do that, uh, I'll go to new entries because uh, I can easily copy, I can copy from these ones. Let's say I want, uh, uh, let me just create mine. I'll just click on new entries. Business area, I can say offshore drilling. So I write off show OSD, offshore drilling operations. Then yes, it's on show, on show. Uh, no, let's say the next is oil and gas. Production, oil and gas production. So I have these two business areas that we use for our operation in Shell. So I'm going to please help me write these things down because I might be asking you them. I might be asking you of them later. Uh, kindly write them down for me. Let me see if I can write the ones I can write by myself. 
should write them down as we are going. As yes, as we are the, going the writing this, like I've done business here, right? First of all, write the company code. So you know, just write training. The company code is SPDC. The company name is the name is SPDC one, and SPDC one stands for Shell Petroleum Development Company. Then I have segments. My segments are OSD. When you're doing your practice and creating your own company, make sure you write your information down. Offshore drilling operations. And the second is ONGP, as oil and gas production. These are my two segments. These are my two business areas. Are we there? So I'm going to save this. Then I can change my request because this is not the same request. I can say new, um, creating, I can just say business areas. I save when I say okay. And the uh, data was saved. Always look at the bottom of the screen to see your messages. Then I'm going to go back. Okay. The next is we can define functional areas. Yeah, we define functional areas in costing. So we are not going to be doing this. The next is to maintain consolidated business area. So write again, maintain consolidated business area. We are going to have two consolidated business areas, OSD and ONGP. Now these consolidated business areas have actually helped you to consolidate um, um, those your areas during um, EAN financial operations. <laughs> I'm going to go to maintain consolidated business area. I'm going to go to new entries. The same thing, I'm going to type OSD. Sure. And ONGP. And I'm going to click on save. Then I can also change this to consolidated. Not every time you change, but let me just be doing it so that you learn. So data was saved. It is not saved if you tell you. So we are done with creating a consolidated business area. You can also look at uh, financial management area, although uh, this might not really be useful for us now, but we can, why not? We can copy settings. We can just copy that our financial areas, of course. We can copy settings from here. Change this to SPBC. SPBC one. SPBC. Uh, SPBC. And USD. Enter. And save. So here is financial management area. Now take note that um, this area is actually used to um, do um, financial management operations. But uh,
it's just an organization unit that is within a, um, that as in within our accounting model, this structures the business organization from the perspective of cash budget. So just around between cash budget management and funds management, that's actually why we serve. So most likely it's not very relevant to our work, but let's just have that in case that's an ordinary area. Save that. Also, we can define segments, although we will do that in details. We will do this in details when we do controlling. So we're going to leave that part for the next, uh, when we, um, segment and profit, <laughs> segment and profit centers are actually tied to the controlling module. So after we are done with our consolidation, we are going to actually um, do, um, after we are done with this consolidation, we are going to look at controlling. And in that area, we're going to discuss on the segment and profit center because they are, they are elements of controlling. But definitely, if we don't work on controlling in FI, you cannot progress at a certain stage. So it's a must that we set up control and we'll do that when we are done with our consolidation, when we are done with our customizations. Okay, so that's that. Um, after you've created these various areas, uh, which are very, very important to our work, the next thing we'll do is actually called assignments. We are going to do some assignments. I don't mean assignment as an as in take home assignments. I mean assignments as in assigning some of these elements we have created to specific areas. The first assignment we are going to do is to assign the company code to the company. Remember, when I was defining company and company code, I told you that. You can assign more than one company code to a company. So we have a company code now and we have a company. So we are going to assign that our company code called SPDC to our company called SPDC1. Uh, Kelly? Yes. It's like the screen freeze. Okay, let me check. Is it okay now? Okay now. I'm seeing maintainer here. Hey, Manuel, can you see now? That is supposed to be. Emmanuel, can you see now? Uh, yeah, I'm seeing the cause of movement. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, that's uh, fine. Okay, so like I said, we're going to look at assignments. The first assignment we're going to do is to assign company codes to company. And uh, like I said, a company can have more than one company code. And this is where the integration begins. Now, remember in the hierarchy, you have clients, you have company now, and you have company codes. You know, but in real life, what we have is in the configuration, what we have is client, company code and inside every company, which is the third hierarchy, you have company codes. So company, company houses all the individual company codes. So for example, you can have a company called Shell and inside Shell you have different company codes. That's different individual companies that make up the company called Shell. So Shell is like a group, while other company codes are actually the operational areas. So at this point, we are going to do the first assignment. We are going to assign company codes to company. So how do we do that? How do we do that? So we are going to go back. Normally, you go to SPRO. We are still in SPRO. You go to Enterprise Structure. And you go to Assignments. 
you go to financial accounting. And of course, you have options here. The first option is assign company code to company. Now, if you don't do this assignment, your company code is just going to be existing as a different entity. Meanwhile, it's supposed to be part of the company. So company and com company code and company cannot exist in, uh, separately. They have to be integrated. So that is why we are assigning the company code to the company. So you click the execute button. You search for your company because this list might be pretty long. So you go to position, search for your company, SPDC. You're going to see SPDC, you're going to see the, uh, the, the city, then you have company. Remember, we are signing this company inside this company code. So click the drop down. Uh, we don't need to go through all this, but you can just search for SPDC one because it will be part of this group. But if you don't want to search too far, let me just, uh, let me search from here. Let me see SPDC one. Okay, so it's here. So from this button here, you can just search. If you remember, the company uh, name abbreviation, the main shell petroleum development company. So we double click on it. So you see now that the company code SPDC, we are assigning the company into the company code. So that's why I said in the hierarchy, <clears throat> you have clients, you have company code, and inside every company code, you have the company. Yes. Yes. But in terms of assignments, so, in terms of assignments, you assign the company inside the company code. As you can see, SPDC is the company code. Let me expand it. You see, this is called company code. We are signing the company into the company code. But in terms of, now, if you look in, 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 in basic, in accounting, basically, in just accounting, you have the client, you have company, then you have company codes. But in SAP system, the hierarchy is a client, a company code, then inside your, because of course, down is company, but what it does is that that company can house as more than one company code. So if I have SPDC, I can also come here and assign SPDC here, SPDC one to this same company, Hamburg. So you see now, I can assign more than one company code to the same company. So that is actually the interpretation of that. You cannot assign a company to a company code, no. You can assign a company code you cannot assign a company. You cannot assign a company code to a company. You assign a company code. You assign company inside a company code. But in basic, in because you need to understand how SAP works. But in accounting, when you the essence, remember, of company code is for consolidation. So if you have more than one company code in a company, that company will help you consolidate each of those individual company codes. But in terms of assignments, you assign the company inside the company code. But in terms of consolidation, all those company codes you have assigned to the company will help you do the consolidation. That is the basic rule of the company. So at this point, I'm going to save my customization and I'm going to change the request to uh, assigning Signing company company code. So at this point, I'm going to save 
and say my request. And once it is green, that means you have passed. Then the next thing is assign, you see now we're assigning company code. The next thing is assign company code to create area. We're not actually working on create area. The next is assign business area to consolidation, consolidation business area. So we're going to remember we created our consolidation business area, we created our business area. So we're going to actually go there. We are going to search for our business area. Uh, what is our business area, Mr. Ima? Give me one of our business area. OSD. OSD. So I'm going to click. Once you click on OSD, it's going to bring out the business area. Uh, and, and also our uh, consolidation business area was also OSD. Remember we had two. So instead of saving this, go to position again and look for the second one, which, is, which was ONGP. Then assign ONGP too, because ONGP is also the name of our consolidation, our, our um, consolidation area. Now, if you can see here yeah, that once you do the assignment, the name, the description will actually appear. So at this point, we say, and we click on that. Assign company code to financial management, assign profit center, of course. We can only do this uh, uh, profit center assignment when we have treated controlling area. That's why, like I said, see the controlling here. So we'll work on our controlling for another topic. But for now, we have to, what you do in your assignments is basically assign company code to company, assign business area to consolidation business area. So those are the two major assignments you need to do. Okay, now haven't set up our company and done the basic assignments, we might be looking at leaving the enterprise structure. Uh, at this point, if you successfully get to this point, that means you have understood one of the basic uh, um, topics. And the next thing we're going to look at briefly before we wrap this up, because uh, remember, this is our first major introductory class. From going forward, I'm just taking it today because one of our colleagues here, her system is having issues. So I don't want to overshoot so that she can um, um, catch up fast. So by hope that God's grace before next weekend, uh, we should have rectified the issues. And like I said, these videos will be sent to you. Maybe you get them, find your way around the videos to, to explain everything you need to know, then you can actually move forward. Now, the next thing we are going to look at is the variant principles. The variant principles. The variant principles. Now, variants are, are, are basically... Variants are basically um, settings. Variants are settings that stores variant in other words stores when you hear the word variant itself it means a particular sentence that stores uh in a particular uh, segment that stores settings now for example you got an example if you buy a new phone if you buy a new phone the the, the screen freeze so i don't know whether you have moved to another screen I've not moved to it. No, I'm not. I'm still here. Are you seeing my cursor? Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm not going. I'm, if I don't, I'm still here. So, um, variant is actually settings. They are, they are stored settings. For example, if you buy a phone, maybe you get open that phone from a pack. 
there are settings that have been saved in that Chrome. Most of those settings, especially things like dates, um, um, your apps, there are some apps in that form that can never be deleted. So these are basically what we call variants. And we have three types of variants in SAP. This normally comes out in the certification exam. We have the fiscal year variant. So I just take note of that. We have the fiscal year variant. We have the posting period variant. And we have the fixed and field status variant. Now, what simply this means are that before you actually start using SAP as an end user, you have to make sure that these variants, these settings are actually put in place. And these variants are created at client level. That means it can be applicable to every other company. For example, if I create a calendar, I can use that calendar for company A and for company B. So variants are actually created at client level. Remember, I said anything that is created at client level can be used across all company codes. So that is um, what variants are. Now, but the first variant you are going to be looking at is actually, and variants have three-step methodology. All variants have three-step methodology. The first is, the first procedure is, you have to define the variance. This comes out in certification exam. The first is you have to define the variance. The second is you have to assign values to the variance. And the third is you assign variance to company codes. So take note, variance are created at client level, but they are assigned to company codes. This one comes out very well. Variants are created at client level and they are um, assigned to company codes. Okay, now today we are going to look at the, the, fis the fiscal year variants. The fiscal year variants. Now we have two forms of fiscal years in SAP. We have two forms of fiscal years. We have the year dependent fiscal year, and we have the year independent fiscal year. Okay, the year independent fiscal year, the year dependent means that your company uses a 12 month calendar fiscal year. That means it must start and finish within a year. Example, from uh, first, um, to December 31st. So that is one of the types of year dependent fiscal year is called calendar fiscal year. So under your year dependent fiscal year, the first type is called your calendar fiscal year. And this your calendar fiscal year must start and finish in the same fiscal year. First of January to 31st of December is a calendar fiscal year. A non-calendar fiscal year uh, means that it must not, it means that it might start, the, the, the non-calendar fiscal year means that it can start in the previous year and finish in another year. For example, from 3rd of March, 2020 to uh, 2nd of February, 2021. That is a non-calendar fiscal year. Then in SAP, we have 12 calendar fiscal year and four special posting periods. Four months special, or, or, or let's just say, and special periods. This is your special periods are, is actually a period of four months. So the total period you have in SAP in a financial year is 16 posting periods. This one 
comes out. 16 posting periods, 12 calendar year or 12 normal periods and four special periods. Now, the essence of this special period is actually used for year-end closing processes. For example, you have finished the financial year for 2020 and you are here to close, you are here to do end of year um, processes. So you have between, you have four months to actually close that out. And after that four months, you might be restricted from having access to the previous fiscal year. So you have within four months to do your reconciliations, currency valuations, um, accounts payable and accounts payable um, issues. You have closed out all pending balance sheet items and all pending balances. You have four months to do that. So um, take note, you have uh, 16 periods in SAP. We also have another fiscal year we call shortened fiscal year. Now this fiscal year happens when a company is unable to complete the 12 month posting period. For example, a company starts in January and for one or two reasons, it, is, uh, it, ha it has liquidity issues, then it is liquidated before December. That is an example of a shortened fiscal year. So these are the kinds of fiscal years we have in SAP. The essence of this is to make sure that SAP accommodates as many fiscal years, as has a, uh, accommodate as many fiscal year variations as possible. So you have calendar fiscal year, non-calendar fiscal year, um, special posting periods, and shortened fiscal year, depending on the situation you have on ground. But for example, we are actually going to be using the calendar fiscal year. Now, how do we set up our fiscal year on SAP? Because like I said, the first step is to define. How do we define our fiscal um, year on um, SAP? Now, you have to go through the same setting. Let me just go back for the sake of in case you have left this page. Same way, I can just start yeah. as... Hello? Hello? I can hear you. Hello? Sorry to stop you. Can I ask a question here? Your line is, your line is cracking. Yeah, can I ask a question? Yes, um, please do. 12 months. What about this calendar fiscal year? Is it the same thing as any 12 months? No. Calendar fiscal it's year means. Oh, I can hear you clearly. Calendar fiscal year means yeah, that. Me now. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is that this is your calendar fiscal year that you mentioned there. Eh? Is it the same thing as 12 months from. <clears throat> any any 12 months? Okay, 1st January to 31st December. Yes, that is calendar fiscal year. Hello? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Prince. Hello? Yes, yes, calendar fiscal year is from 1st of January Hello? to 31st of December. Can you hear me? I am. Hello? Yeah, can you, uh, hello? Yeah. No, 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 I didn't hear you. Hello? Yeah, what? I, please, okay. can I send you a transition here? Okay. I've had you, I've had you, Kenny. Okay, you can continue. All right, all right. Sorry for that. Yes, I've had you. Can so continue. now, how, how, yeah. do we, how yeah. do we set up our fiscal? Because this is a very important, uh, it's a very important um, configuration in SAP to be able to define your fiscal year. So in case I'm just logged in, I can go to my customizations. I've showed you the various steps. I'll just type SPRO, come to SAP, reference, ING. Then I can go to financial accounting new. There's also financial accounting there, but I'll be using the new. Um, the next step is to go to financial accounting 
global settings. There's an icon here. The next step is to go to ledgers. The next step is to go to fiscal year and posting periods. Then you have the option, maintain fiscal year variant or shorten fiscal year. So I'm going to execute this. Okay, now when I execute this, you're going to see various uh, fiscal years. Like I said, we're going to be using, and of course, according to uh, uh, practice, uh, we use, most companies use the calendar fiscal year. So we can either create our own or just copy settings from an existing SAP calendar. So I know that, for example, K4 is, has the basic setting I need. It is also a, a fiscal year variant from SAP. It is under the calendar year. The number of posting period is 12 and the number of special period is four. As you can see here, um, there are some customizations that do not have um, four calendar, but the standard in SAP is four special periods. So I'm just going to highlight this and I'm going to click on copy, copy as. Then I'm going to change, please write in your notes, my fiscal year, my fiscal year is actually, I'm going to give a code. Uh, uh, my company share, so I'll say S1. My fiscal year is S1. It is not year dependent. This is under a calendar year. Number of posting period is 12. Number of special periods is four. So I've so you know, with this, all I need to click when I'm done. If you don't see if this if this save is blank, always know that it will give you what you need to do is to click on enter. So immediately you click on enter. That's why you need to copy so that you will take advantage of some of the settings that are available in SAP. Remember, I copied from K4. So I'll click on copy all. I want all the settings. So I'll click on copy all. It will tell me number of dependent entries, 368. I'm fine. So I'll say, OK, continue. So number of copied entries, one. So I have my fiscal year variant as S1. So I'm actually going to um, play. If I have a shortened fiscal year, if this is a shortened, for example, I can go to short. OK, let me save this first. Then I have here own request. I'm going to, oh, sorry. I'm supposed to click on new request, create request. Um, F S1 is carrier. At this point, we're going to call it this carrier and we'll say okay. So I've successfully created my own fiscal year. If I want this to be a shortened fiscal year or your year dependent, which is from a particular year in a month to another year, let's say from uh, 2nd of February or 1st of June this year to May the next year, I'll call it year dependent and I'll specify the months that make up that year. I'll just show you an example. If I want this to be year dependent, I'll highlight this and I'll go to period text. Sorry, go to periods. Let me see. Let me just create a new one. Uh, D4. I'm not actually doing much here, but let me say this is dependent. Posting period is 12. No, posting period is um, 12. Okay, special period is 4. Then I save this. Then I can go to period text. 
imperial test i can now define sorry i need to click on new entries imperial test i cannot define the months that make up let's say i'm starting from june um june So I'll start from June and go down to every day of the month that make up. So as I'm starting from June this year, which is this fiscal year, I'll have to go down to the next fiscal year to actually enter to May. So here you define all the periods that make up that um, um, year that is not dependent, that calendar that is not 12 months in a particular year. So that's what you just define them and save. That are saved. So, but we are going to be using a calendar year. So immediately you have finished defining your fiscal year. The next thing to do is to uh, assign this variant to your assigned company code to the fiscal year variant. Um, but before then, we might look at the posting periods, um, which we might um, look at, but let me see. Okay, but we need to define, before we assign, we need to define the posting periods that uh, make up our fiscal year. All we did was just to told the system that it is 12 but we have not actually defined our posting periods. We are going to end here for the day. And when we resume, we are going to begin from posting periods, take it that from one step to another. After the posting period, because the posting period, we need to um, tell the system the number of days, um, um, actually, you know, define all the periods that make up that particular year before we actually assign that to the company code. But um, um, before we do that, let me let me see if I can just do that and let that go. Let me just finish this one. Let me assign company code to fiscal year. Go to position. My company code is SPDC. My fiscal year is what? S1, right? Then enter. You see now what it said is no postings are possible without fiscal year variant. That means I am yet to define my posting periods. So like I said, uh, yes, let me close this. Um, so, so when we come by God's grace, we are going to actually define variants, our open posting period variants. Then we we'll assign the variants to the uh, fiscal year, and we we'll assign the variants to the company code. Then we cannot assign the company code to the fiscal year. We also will need to define our open and closed posting period. This is actually how this works for each of our accounts. This is for assets, um, um, customers, vendors, GL. For each of our um, account groups, we need to define posting periods for them. All this we are going to do when we resume next weekend. So for now, remember, we had created a company, we had created a company code, we had assigned the company code to the company, we did business area, um, um, segments, we looked at fiscal year variants, created a variant. So by God's grace, from, for Saturday next weekend, we're going to look at um, posting periods and assigning company goes to fiscal year and take it from one step to another until we successfully round off our course. Remember, this training is for a month every weekend. So from next weekend, we're actually going to start earlier because we will have to cover 
as much as we can before this for but the most important thing is when we are done with this setting then the work is done because without these settings you cannot post transactions as an end user so we have to make sure that these settings are okay then you have to actually receive a lot of um, homework or assignments to do when it comes to end user activities then at the end of the day um, um you should have been very well you should have been exposed to sap now learning the learning the customization is something that only few people know most end users don't actually understand what happens at the back end all they know is that they resume work every day the one that is responsible for accounts receivable only has access to accounts receivable and you just perform your activity if it's only invoice you have access to, you just start entering invoice and credit them with us all. So what we are doing is actually a very important part of SAP to customize the back end or to enable the end users to work. And when you know the back end, when there are errors, you can actually trace it and know where the error because as we do this class, we encounter errors. Some days, sometimes we take hours to get to rectify. Sometimes we might just sort it out on the spot. So thank you very much again for joining in and uh, finding time. Remember, the secret to really understanding and using SAP is practice. So after now, uh, you can take some time off, replicate everything you have learned, because I'm going to drop the videos for you. Replicate everything you have learned so that when we come to the next class, if you have any questions to ask, so that you can follow through. Because by the time you are, by the time we keep moving in customizations, those you would, you would, you would I believe at the end of class, you have at least two or three companies. You should have practiced with at least two or three companies of your own so that it will stick. And you should do that from time to time. Then when we, as we progress, you're going to get practical work. Like, I'm going to give you a project that you will do from scratch. So just know that uh, I'm not just going to teach you and you're going to do work. Like, you start have a project, you continue like that until you're very good and conversant. And for those who want to take it a step further and actually go for the certification exam, why not? We can um, give you the guidance you need to go for your certification exam. And I, and I assure you, um, if you follow through with every single thing, and when, once, when it's time, we guide you. And if we send you terms, you're able to get 90%, 98% of those past questions, then just go and sit for your SAP exams. You will actually come about. Before you do that, you need to understand, you need to understand these basic things because in the interview, in the questions, it is these things I'm talking that you'll be seeing. They ask you how many fiscal years, what is the number of fiscal periods, but they might not come out straight. They might just give you a scenario. <laughs> so you have to figure it out. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, if you have any questions now, please, you can ask. Um, Can I, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, you just forward the video so that we can. I understand. I can't wait to practice. <laughs> because, you know, as we are flowing, if I say I want to move it to you, yeah. I it. Yeah, I understand. I will send it now. After every class, I'll forward the video. So have a good night, everyone, and uh, stay safe. Have a good week ahead. Yeah. Uh, Kili, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, they do mention the, the the training duration. Okay. I said I said this I said this for a month. But, okay. Okay. But, Still, we still have a course outline to finish. So we will have to make sure that we 
spend a lot of okay. time. But okay. if we don't finish within a month, because that time we have to extend. So to be good for all of us to by Saturday, we will start earlier, probably from five. Going forward from next weekend, we will start by five so that we can accomplish what we need to accomplish. All right, have a nice day. Okay, okay.